Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. As people are joining, we'll get started with a few technical announcements. This meeting is in French and English. So to listen to the French audio, you can click interpretation and select French at the bottom of your screen. To hear the French only, click mute original audio. The presentation slides will be in English, but there is a French version available on the website, which I will put in the chat. As participants join, please feel free to introduce yourselves to your colleagues in the chat box. We ask that you remain on mute while the presenters are speaking, but feel free to, during the question and answer session, raise your hand using the Zoom function under the reactions button at the bottom of your Zoom screen. The moderator will call on you and you can unmute yourself and ask your question directly. You can also put questions in the chat box in French or in English. If you have any technical difficulties during the webinar, please feel free to message me in the chat box. And with that, I will hand over to Martin. Thank you very much, Sita. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. Uh, thanks so much for joining this webinar uh, on improving the quality of care of nutrition MNCH services. Um, and we will learn uh, about the global resources and opportunities and lessons from Ethiopia. My name is Martin Dolston. Uh, I work at WHO headquarters in Geneva, and I'm coordinating the quality of care MNCH network. Uh, and I would just briefly give an overview uh, of this network for you. So uh, in February 2017, um, 11 countries, which you can see at the top of this slide, uh, together with WHO and supported by a coalition of technical and implementing partners, established the, uh, the Network for Improving Quality of Care for Maternal Newborn and Child Health. So uh, the network was established to accelerate achievements of universal health coverage goals with a focus on quality. Now, driven by the values of equity and dignity, all countries in the network committed to reduce uh, maternal and newborn deaths and stillbirths by 50% and to improve the experience for pregnant women and mothers and their babies by uh, the end of 2022 uh, in selected districts and facilities. And to achieve these targets, uh, the network agreed to pursue four strategic objectives, uh, which are leadership, action, learning, and accountability uh, as a framework for implementation of its activities and uh, the key ingredients for impact. Now, the network has used MNCH as a pathfinder uh, to build systems and structures for quality improvement at all levels um, of the health system. And although the focus has been on MNCH, now we see that countries in the network are scaling up and looking to expand into other programs such as nutrition. Now, this is still uh, very much a learning process. Hence, uh, we are very excited to hear and learn more about the possibilities and how to include uh, nutritional aspects into the overall approach on improving quality of care. So with that, uh, I would like to hand over to Anne Dechen and wishing you a very nice hour ahead. Thank you. Thanks, Martin, and welcome everyone on behalf of the Child Health Task Force. My name is Anne Detjen. I'm a, a focal point for Child Health in UNICEF headquarters in New York, and I'm co-chairing the Pediatric Quality of Care subgroup of the Child Health Task Force together with Patricia Jodry from USAID and Peter Waiswa from Makerere University um, in Uganda. The Child Health Task Force is a network of over 2,400 members from over 80 countries that aims to strengthen equitable and comprehensive child health programs through primary health care inclusive of community health systems. We're working together across 10 different subgroups um, to focus on five themes of work, including coordination, advocacy, support to countries, learning and knowledge management. The Pediatric Quality of Care subgroup aims to create a platform in the child health community to work together with 
quality experts and advocate for and provide targeted support to countries to improve quality of care um, for children in countries where we as task force members are active. Um, we are very excited about this session today and um, we will have two sets of presentation. We will learn from country experience. Sita, if you go to the next slide, please. We will learn from country experience in Ethiopia on strengthening the quality of integrated nutrition services. And we have two presenters. One is this Dr. Desalek Bekele Taye. He is an assistant director of the Health Service Quality Directorate and a team lead for the quality improvement team in the Ministry of Health, Ethiopia. He will be presenting together with Zenebu Yimam, who's working for Growth Through Nutrition, a USAID funded multi-sectoral nutrition and wash project in Ethiopia, where she leads the overall strategic and technical support for nutrition and quality of nutrition activities in the project. Next slide, please. We will start the session though, by an introduction and overview of the newly launched nutrition and quality of care brief. This presentation will be given by Kathleen Hill, who is the Senior Quality Advisor for the USAID Momentum Country and Global Leadership Program and JAPAIGO, and Lydia Wisner, who serves as the Nutrition Pro Program Manager for USAID's Momentum Country and Global Leadership Project based in Washington, DC. After the presentations, we will have a moderated quality and uh, question and answer session that will be moderated by Janice Alvi, Nutrition Advisor at USAID. Without further ado, I'm handing it straight over to Lydia and Kathleen. Thanks so much. Thank you, Anna and Martin. Good morning, good afternoon. Bonjour tout le monde. Thank you for joining today. Um, I am Lydia Wisner, Nutrition Program Manager for the Momentum Country and Global Leadership Project. Next slide, please. Um, so here's our outline for today. We are going to be presenting on the nutrition quality of care and how the WHO's quality of care standards include nutrition specific statements and measures that support improved quality of nutrition care in health services for women, newborns and children. My colleague, Dr. Hill, Dr. Kathleen Hill will then be looking at the opportunities and the policy and implementation considerations when applying the standards. Next slide. For context, 22% of children under five are stunted which we know has a lifelong impact on health. Undernutrition is linked to 45% of all deaths of children under five. Globally, only 44% of infants are exclusively breastfed to six months, which is below the WHO global nutrition target, 50% by 2025. 42% of children under five are anemic, as are 40% of pregnant women, which has implications for premature birth, postpartum hemorrhage, and other risk factors. Next slide. To address this, there are many evidence-based nutrition interventions that can prevent poor nutrition when applied with quality at scale. Some of these are outlined in the slide from Buter et al in 2013. There are two critical windows of opportunity for nutrition intervent interventions. The first 1000 days from conception to the child's second birthday and adolescence. And considering about 12 million girls younger than 18 are married each year, this also serves as an entry point to improve the health of mothers and babies. As outlined in this slide, evidence-based interventions for maternal and child nutrition are important across the life cycle and can be applied through various platforms, including schools in the community, as well as in health facilities. But we are going to see as the WHO standards for improving quality of healthcare and nutrition care focus specifically on targeting the standard of services provided at the health facility level. Next slide, please. In 2018, The Lancet calculated the excess mortality in LMICs due to poor quality of care versus non utilization of care and demonstrated that over half, 56% of deaths amenable to care are due to poor quality. Of 8.6 million deaths, 5 million people sought care but received poor quality care. Countries in the global health community are therefore rightly focused on universal health coverage in the Sustainable Development Goal era. The central plank of SDG 3, which is to ensure healthy lives and promote well-being for all at all ages, is universal health coverage. But UHC will remain an empty vessel unless there is a deliberate effort to improve the quality of healthcare services globally. 
despite progress, major deficits in quality of care persist. Next slide. We'll now walk through the WHO quality of care framework and the nutrition specific standards therein. Next slide, please. In 2015, the WHO published a vision and framework for quality care for women, newborns and children. The quality of care framework includes eight domains, which are aspirational standards to assess, improve and monitor care within the context of the health system. The proposed domains of quality come in three categories. The first three, which are highlighted in green in the diagram, include evidence-based best practices for routine care and management of complications, actionable information systems, and ref functional referral systems. The next three to make to relate to the experience of care, which are in pink in the diagram. And this is important because until now, there haven't been this level of attention on experience of care. Domains four to six are effective communication with patients, respect and dignity for patients and emotional support for patients. The third dimension is health system function, which is clearly necessary to deliver quality of care. The competent and motivated health re human resources, which are the healthcare workers, and eight is the essential physical resources available to support them. Next slide, please. Uh, this slide presents some common examples of problems related to quality of care for nutrition services, broken down by inputs, processes, and results to reflect the WHO framework. And here it's important to pause to note the critical element of process to quality improvement. We know that to provide high quality care, the healthcare system and health facilities need to have readiness as relates to the first box in the diagram for inputs. Providers and the systems need to be clear and in place and available. Commodities need to be in place. But unless these key inputs are closely linked to high quality process of care with data collection to monitor the quality, we won't see quality outputs. Historically, the inputs have been the focus in global health but quality focuses on the process. And we could use this model to analyze where the quality gaps are. Without focusing on process and inputs, we aren't going to get the results. Some common examples of problems related to quality of care for nutrition services are outlined in the diagram. Under inputs, we see weak provider nutrition skills or not enough providers, lack of clear nutrition guidance, lack of essential nutrition commodities, and lack of nutrition data to monitor the quality of nutrition care. Under processes, nutrition care processes do not adhere to standards. They're weakly organized services. Nutrition care is sometimes seen as uncaring or humiliating for the parent. In terms of results, the poor quality of nutrition care includes negative nutrition outcomes, poor client experience, and low utilization of care by clients. Next slide, please. After the vision, definition and framework, the WHO developed three sets of quality standards. The first for maternal and newborn health in 2016, pediatric and young adolescents in 2018, and most recently, the standards for improving the quality of care for small sick newborns in 2020. Within each, each the eight domains of the framework are presented as eight quality standards, aspirational goals of what is expected to assess, improve and monitor high quality care in health facilities. Each standard is supported by up to five quality statements designed to drive measurable improvements in care. And each quality statement then includes measures for assessing, measuring, and monitoring quality of care. Next slide, please. This last slide before I hand over to Kathleen pulls the nutrition specific quality statements included within the three publications for maternal newborn health, small sick newborns, and pediatric and young adolescents. These quality statements are from standard one, which is the provision of care, or in the framework, the first domain, evidence-based practices for routine care and management of complications. There are nutrition-specific measures that support additional standards, including, for example, standard four, communication with clients. And though we don't have time to cover them all now, we do encourage you to review them. The first box outlines the nutrition quality statements for maternal and newborn health, which are mapped to the 10 steps of the Baby Friendly Hospital Initiative. The focus is primarily upon breast milk feeding and promoting the environment that protects and supports early and exclusive breastfeeding for the first six months, incorporating postnatal care that includes breastfeeding support and counselling. 
consistent with consideration of the mother's experience of care in line with the WHO framework, the standards support respectful maternity care, as well as nurturing care, protecting the mother and newborn from harm, including protection from breast milk substitutes, encouraging close contact and rooming in, and emphasizing the importance of communication, all of which are important for establishing successful breastfeeding. Additional nutrition support during PNC includes IFA supplementation for the mother. The second box describes the nutrition statements for small sick newborns from the 2020 standards. Small sick newborns have very different needs for nutrition and immune protection, but still get optimal nutrition from their mother's milk. Therefore, the statements are primarily concerned with supporting mothers of small sick newborns to provide exclusive breastfeeding or alternative feeding which is express breast milk, donor breast milk, or formula where it is appropriate. And that clinically stable preterm newborns are given kangaroo mother care to encourage breast milk feeding. There is a particular consideration given to the treatment and care of newborns of HIV infected mothers and guidance for the provision of vitamin D, calcium, phosphorus, and iron supplements for very low birth weight babies. The pediatric and young adolescent nutrition quality statements are described in the last box. <clears throat> Excuse me. They complement IMCI and ETAT and the global strategy for IYCF and focus on what can be done through facility-based care, which does limit the opportunity for engagement with young adolescents who have less health center contacts than younger children. The statements include growth monitoring, IYCF counseling, treatment of acute malnutrition and anemia and vitamin A supplementation where appropriate. I'll now hand over to Kathleen. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Lydia, and a warm greeting to all of you. Many thanks for joining today's webinar. Merci à tous les collègues francophones. On est vraiment ravis que vous soyez avec nous. So I'm now going to spend a few minutes talking about what, it, what the opportunities and policy and implementation considerations are for actually applying these national, these nutrition quality statements to improve nutrition care and MNCH services. Next slide, please. Um, the uh, Momentum Country and Global Leadership Project um, recently published a nutrition quality of care brief that summarizes the nutrition specific quality statements and measures that already exist within the published WHO standards for improving quality of MNH, pediatric young adolescent, and sick and small newborn care. And you will see in the chat a link to this brief, uh, which is, is available in both English and French. And the brief also reviews policy and implementation considerations for actually applying these quality statements that are nutrition specific to improve the nutrition content of maternal newborn child health services. And I'll just spend a very few minutes talking about that today uh, in the next few minutes. Next slide, please. So in terms of policy and implementation considerations, we know that nutrition interventions that are implemented within health systems are more effective for improving health outcomes and nutrition outcomes. And you'll see a link to an article that explores this evidence in detail. Um, we know that the MNCH nutrition specific quality statements can be applied to strengthen an enabling national and policy environment, and also to help structure the design and implementation of subnational maternal newborn child health quality improvement interventions, specifically focused on improving nutrition care as part of integrated health services for women, newborns, and children. And as you have heard at the beginning of today's session from our colleague um, Martin Dolston with WHO, the multi-country network for improving quality of maternal newborn child health that was launched by WHO in 2017 and linked global resources, both specific to the network as well as global quality of care resources, offer a very important platform and resources for improving quality of nutrition care and MNCH services. Next slide, please. So as mentioned, the network and other global quality guidance 
emphasizes key activities at national, subnational, and health facility levels for improving quality of MNCH care with a strong focus on community engagement, which we know is critical. And at the national level, there's a strong focus on government leadership of quality of care efforts, enabling costed quality policy and strategy to structure um, a broader you know, health system enabling environment. And at the subnational level, which has been very much the focus of a lot of the actual implementation of quality statements to improve care, there's a strong focus on building leadership and management at the regional and district level to be able to design and manage quality of care program activities, including support of facility QI teams and regular peer-to-peer -peer support across sites within countries and across countries. And at the facility level, the focus is on quality improvement led by multi cadre QI teams with strong community engagement. Next slide, please. So what might this look like at the subnational level, for example, in a district or a region? The nutrition quality statements, which can be formulated as improvement aims, can be incorporated into a phased district level quality of program, care program that's led by district managers with engagement of key stakeholders. And the table here illustrates, just as an example, um, how, for example, a district might design its improvement work to sequentially focus on important nutrition quality statements. Um, and this slide also shows that that process could then be used to structure improvement work across many sites, sometimes up to 30 to 50 sites that work together to achieve common aims. So for example, in a first phase, a district could work on improving routine postnatal care for mother and newborn, including healthcare interventions, and also very importantly, including nutrition specific uh, interventions, uh, which you've heard my colleague outline exclusive early breastfeeding counseling support, such as um, as endorsed by the Baby Friendly Hospital Initiative, nutrition counseling and, and iron su supplementation for the mother. And then in a subsequent phase, the uh, district could work on more complex processes related to uh, nutrition care and outcomes for children. Next slide, please. What might this look like at a facility level? At the facility level, which is really where the rubber hits the road in terms of actually changing the quality of care, improving the quality of care, the support is really around um, enabling frontline QI teams in healthcare facilities to identify important quality of care gaps, analyze root causes, test and adopt changes and continuously measure trends and quality of care indicators to guide QI efforts. So for example, in the image that you see here, um, uh, a facility QI team might be working to improve the fact that children are not routinely weighed and assessed for nutritional status, either you know stunting, acute malnutrition, overweight, and based on where the facility is starting from in terms of um, the gaps related to assessing children systematically for their nutritional status, QI team members representing multiple functions within a health facility, such as the nutrition professional, nutritionist, nurse, uh, pharmacist, laboratory officer, would work together to systematically address, understand what are the root causes in the local context for why this best practice is not happening and to together plan and test changes in their local context to try to overcome that gap to improve the adherence for every child every time that child or woman comes in contact with the health system to receive the best care and that this would be uh, monitored on an ongoing basis within a run chart, which you see on the, the lower left, um, to actually determine is care or is care not improving. And you will see an example of this in the next presentation from our colleagues from Ethiopia, applying this to, to a real situation um, uh, supported within a program within Ethiopia. Next slide, please. So in terms
terms of uh, the broader, I've given an example or tried to give an example of, um, you know, working across system levels around subnational management and oversight of quality efforts, what that might look like when actually applied at the level of a QI team in a facility. And now I would just like to briefly highlight some of the broader policy and implementation considerations for improving quality of nutrition care and MNCH services. Um, and this is all available in the technical brief, and we invite you to review that at your convenience and to share. I'm sure that we can improve this over time with many inputs, but I think a key piece is to really promote participation of nutrition stakeholders in MNCH quality of care working groups at both national and subnational level to um, also ensure that nutrition specific improvement aims, the kinds of quality statements that were presented by my colleague Lydia and associated nutrition specific quality of care measures are intentionally included in the design and oversight of subnational MNCHQI efforts. That nutrition is not an afterthought, that it is very much uh, part of uh, you know, integrated high quality MNCH care and that QI efforts include a strong focus on nutrition that we regularly uh, support multi-cadre facility QI teams that include nutrition members, community members, and uh, uh, pharmacists, uh, uh, nurses, physicians, depending on the problems that are being addressed by the facility level, but with a strong emphasis on the importance of including nutrition professionals, and that there's a regular uh, focus on, on collecting and analyzing nutrition quality of care indicators as part of QI interventions to improve quality of MNCH care. And the next slide, my last slide now, um, is just to leave you with a few messages that we think are very critical. And, you know, one is just again to reiterate that the quality of care network and the associated nutrition specific quality statements and measures in the existing WHO standards, we think offer a very important platform for improving nutrition care and MNCH services. We think advocacy is really vital to raise awareness of these nutrition specific quality statements and measures among multiple stakeholders and to incorporate these as a central element of MNCHQI efforts at global, national and subnational level. That we think that global commitments such as the United Nations Decade of Action on Nutrition uh, can actively promote and incorporate these standards. And I think our last message um, is that we, uh, we propose that um, if nutrition, maternal, newborn, child health, and quality of care stakeholders can um, proactively align efforts to leverage existing MNCH nutrition and quality of care resources and platforms, such as the network, we think this can have a huge impact on improving and sustaining high quality nutrition and health services for women, newborn, and children. So I thank you very much for listening. You will see in the PowerPoint a slide which has many resources, which is the next slide. Um, if you would like to look at some of these um, additional resources that I have mentioned, and thank you very much for making time to join today. And I now have the pleasure of handing to our colleagues from uh, Ethiopia, and I'll, I'll pass it to our moderator. Thank you. Thank you, Kathleen. Uh, my name is Salim, as you uh, noticed earlier. Uh, I will be discussing the Ethiopia experience in designing and executing the quality strategy and related initiatives. So, my presentation begins with a brief uh, background about the quality of care in the Japan health system and the formulation of the first ever strategy, National Healthcare Quality Strategy. And the second part of my presentation uh, deals with uh, what were the mechanisms and platforms established to secure the collaborative execution of partners uh, during the strategy period. And thirdly, I will discuss uh, what are opportunities and challenges for integrating the nutrition QOC with uh, MNH quality of care. And I will also, uh, I will also say 
a couple of things about the contribution of GTN to the overall national health system quality improvement efforts. And finally, uh, uh, the way forward would be uh, pointed out. Next, please. Uh, the, the major objective in this presentation is uh, sharing the ATPN experience in implementing uh, the quality strategy and initiatives. Next. Just a brief background. Uh, even though there were initiatives uh, in the Japan health system uh, targeted to improving the quality of care, uh, the concerted effort was uh, began uh, in 2015-16 uh, fiscal year in Ethiopia. By the time where the first ever strategy may be uh, one of the first strategies in the continent, national healthcare quality strategy was launched. And this strategy has clearly stated uh, certain clinical areas where uh, priority should be given. And among this area, nutrition was one, alongside with maternal and neonatal health. Uh, there were also some alignments in these initiatives. Uh, by the time we launched National Healthcare Quality Strategy, uh, there were also initiatives uh, being launched by the WHO in which Ethiopia uh, was uh, the first uh, country, the first the, the first ten countries, uh, and uh, this initiative that aimed to decrease maternal and neonatal deaths with uh, uh, stillbirth and bringing positive their experience, we adopted this goal and uh, formulated a three-year roadmap outlining uh, the interventions, objectives, and uh, things to be done to attain the objectives. Next, please. So, the, in the Japan health system, uh, there was no uh, a big documentation or uh, a big body of literature, but before the implementations of health sector transformation plans, uh, there were significant uh, achievement in the uh, outcomes of maternal uh, and neonatal health. But people didn't stop there and they designed National Health uh, Sector Transformation Plan 1, in which improving quality and equity of the healthcare was pronounced as an agenda and uh, for materializing this, Agenda, the Ministry of Health designed a national quality strategy. And this quality strategy has had uh, a good progress in implementing the quality management structures. And it has also helped us building uh, a massive uh, uh, capacity building uh, of our healthcare professionals. And significant effort was made to improve uh, the care outcome, care processes, and uh, several QI projects were cascaded and uh, graduated during this time. Uh, in the national quality strategy, we have also a priority, as I have said earlier, the nutrition, and uh, along with maternal and neonatal health standards, we formulated the uh, health, uh, the clinical audit standards that facilities are uh, guided to use uh, to audit their clinical practice and uh, to uh, uh, formulate subsequent quality improvement projects in order to improve the care process. So in the implementation of the National Health Service Quality Strategy and the MNH uh, POC, we used several platforms. Uh, the most pr prominent one are the steering group. We have a national healthcare quality steering group in which uh, larger ideas, big, ide big agendas are discussed and uh, majority of the leadership di uh, direction is awarded. And we have also technical working groups, uh, which the implementing partners and directors within the of health are key participants, uh, only 
more dealing with the uh, technical issues uh, in the improvement efforts. And uh, this platform also helps us in building the capacity and we uh, plan capacity building uh, programs jointly and cascade uh, to the facilities and professionals in order to ensure efficiency of our resources and time. We also conduct joint support to supervision uh, with implementing partners. And this also helps us to learn from uh, one implementing partner area to the other. And uh, we organize a summit uh, for uh, mainly for disseminating the successes and uh, to learn from the failures of the quality improvement project in the national uh, initiatives. Uh, and this platform, the National Quality Summit, is co hosted by a majority of our partners. And uh, we uh, put a big issues there that require a common uh, consensus and uh, discuss upon it and reach to uh, uh, a common issue. Next. So uh, among the partners that we actively work in the Ministry of Health is the Save the Children. And uh, Save the Children during the GTN uh, project period uh, had contributed to the health system improvement efforts largely, especially in uh, technical contribution. The personnel in the Save the Children's and the framework of GTN were very helpful in uh, technical areas in developing the uh, manuals, uh, developing strategy, uh, and also uh, providing agenda for uh, improvement efforts. And the GTN had uh, a very nice team in developing capacity building. Uh, they are largely working in the uh, subnational levels like uh, the district, and that has uh, largely contributed to having uh, the uh, cadres there, the quality cadres, uh, to uh, promote the quality service. And also, the GTN had, save the children, and the GTN had uh, a great lesson in executing a quality improvement efforts in the nutrition and we consumed this evidence in formulating the uh, new strategy. So uh, I would say there is a great opportunity to uh, integrate the nutrition QOC into a managed QOC. As in Ethiopia, quality is a national priority. Even though it is under a draft stage, the national policy clearly spells out that quality is a policy direction. And also in the health sector transformation plan, a significant portion is given for quality and equity uh, that includes the essential health services uh, and nutrition. And there is also uh, a strong political will to invest in uh, nutrition improvement activities uh, our politicians are learning that uh, working on nutrition quality or improving the nutritional status of population would help in uh, improving the economy and also uh, the growth of the nation. And national quality and safety strategy clearly uh, puts the, the world level intervention uh, as a mainstay of improving the quality of the service provided. Uh, so these are very great opportunities for uh, integration of the nutrition QOC to a manage a QOC. Uh, during this time, we have also uh, a certain challenges. Uh, some are obvious, but the first one is very critical in uh, our state hub. The, Ministry of Health is organized into directorates, and these directorates have uh, their own function, their own plan, and uh, their own strategies even. And so we, we face the challenge in bringing them on board to work on the 
uh, MNHQOC and uh, nutrition QOC. So they work by themselves and uh, the, the, the challenge is significant to the level of uh, uh, failing to work on uh, the similar goal. And the pandemic and peace and instability in Ethiopia are also significant challenges in overall effort to improve quality and best. Uh, I'm sorry, Sita. There is some sound. Good. So, pandemic and peace and stability issues are uh, challenges that we have faced, and this uh, uh, disrupted the routine, the healthcare delivery, and the improvement efforts. And most of the quality improvement projects uh, were uh, having the, 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 the problem of discontinuation or uh, some even vanished from the facility level. Next, please. So these are the way forward to strengthen the integration of national, the integration of uh, nutrition QOC with a managed QOC. The first one is ensuring integration between the Ministry of Health and the uh, uh, partners uh, and the subnational structure is critical. Uh, as I have said earlier, the the intra-directorate collaboration is very key here, and we have to uh, work towards that, and that is uh, a great point to consider for strengthening the system. And the other one is collaborative execution. This one is uh, this one is actually tested in the and setup, and we are very grateful our, for our partners. Uh, we, we, we execute our plan collaboratively, and uh, every partner uh, contributes to, to its maximum towards the uh, implementation of the strategy. And also, uh, sustaining gains is critical, and sometimes uh, there are tendencies of uh, going backwards uh, what we achieved it. So, ensuring uh, the sustaining mechanism is a critical one. Uh, thank you very much for listening, and I now uh, leave the floor to uh, the Nebu to discuss the rest of uh, the country. Okay, uh, thank you, Dr. Dasali. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone, depending on where you are. My name is Zanabu Imam, uh, Nutrition Advisor at the Save the Children Growth Renutrition Project. I'll be presenting grocery nutrition uh, activity experience in improving quality of nutrition service. Next slide, please. Here is the outline. Next slide, please. Just to give you a brief introduction about grocery nutrition project, it's USID uh, flagship multisectoral and wash project implements in 120 waradas in five regions of Ethiopia in Amhara, Oromia, SNNP, Tidama, and Tigray, aiming to improve nutrition status of women and young children, focusing on the first 1,000 days. Uh, its approach is described by five intermediate results and cross-cutting. One of the intermediate results is increased utilization of uh, quality nutrition service. Next slide, please. In order to increase utilization of quality nutrition service, the project improved the capacity of extension worker, workers by providing intensive coaching and mentoring in addition to quality improvement and other uh, nutrition related training. It engages in nutrition supply forecasting and assessing nutrition commodity by annually to ensure sustainability and also provide support to health facilities to ensure effective use of data with an emphasis on extraction of um, and use of data for quality improvement as part of coaching activities. At the HCU level, which is the smallest division in the European health system, it supports health centers with their satellite hotspots. 
in the application of quality impl implementation models, namely Kaizen 5S and model for improvement. Uh, from federal to RADA level, the project worked closely with Ministry of Health, uh, MSA, Health Service, Quality, Health Extension, and Primary Health Care and Hygiene Units, providing them with technical and financial supports in developing and implementing different strategies, programs, and guidelines. At national level, it facilitated workshops where technical leaders of the three directorates came together to have a common understanding on quality improvement approaches and also facilitated quality improvement focused joint field visit to learning pages. Next slide, please. Kaizen 5S and model for improvements are the quality improvement models highly recommended by um, Ethiopian uh, Minister of Health as an engine and uh, vehicle for improvement. Prior to applying quality improvement model, the project with Warada Health Office or district selected one PHCU per Warada to serve as a learning site for neighboring or catchment PHCUs. It's worked closely with Ministry of Health and other partners to avoid duplication of effort and provided quality improvement training to health workers and health extension workers. The project supports 100 health centers to establish performance monitoring and quality improvement and developed quality assessment tool using load quality assurance sampling technique that includes chart review, observation, and exit interview. The operational researches, projects, mid-term review, joint supportive supervision, and quality improvement project report findings showed increased in coverage of the key nutrition service. And health workers also reported that clean and well-organized workplace motivated, feel confidence, and helped them to save time. The project provided intensive coaching on Kaizen 5 and model for improvement. Kaizen 5 stands for sorting, setting in order, shining, standardizing, and sustaining to organize and manage the workspace and flow to improve the efficiency of work. As you can see here, model for improvement have, has basic components, the three fundamental questions and PDSA cycle. Facilities follow key steps, starting from identify, prioritize, set problem, select problem, and define problem statement, set an M, root cause analysis. Usually they use fishbone analysis and five wise, establish measures, develop ideas and test changes using a PDSA cycle, implement change and the spread implement uh, the, the sector. The other quality improvement focused performance uh, PTU review meetings have been supported to strengthen health center and health spot linkage. 213 exchange visits has been facilitated so far, reaching more than 400 non-QI or learning uh, pages. And currently, the quality improvement models are functional and significant learning pages. Next slide, please. Some of the change ideas were community mobilization using health development armies, integration of nutritional screening with various campaign peer supervision, house-to-house -house nutrition counseling, utilize internal revenue, monitor nutrition report in the requisition for, quantify supplies based on case load and request supplies timely. The other is closely monitoring the routine nutrition service data, use locally available required material in absence or shortage of HMIS registers, borrow or lend nutrition supplies from or to nearby facilities and conduct frequent orientation and coaching session on quality improvement and project specific topics to their staff. Next slide, please. Here's just a couple of examples of how health centers and health spots tracking quality improvement projects. The run chart shows the trends of vitamin A uptakes and nutrition screening uh, for children. The signals indicate that there is significant improvement in vitamin uptake and nutrition screening by applying different change ideas. 
Next slide, please. These are examples of Python 5S before and after its application. In addition, some of PHU have implemented uh, healthcare facility gardening and grow various types of vegetables. Next slide, please. When it comes to facility terrain barriers, the operational research finding revealed that quality improvement activities were reported to be facilitated when there are a strong quality improvement structure that owns and leads quality improvement efforts, strategies, guidelines, the presence of motivated and committed staff, uninterrupted availability of supplies, customized quality improvement approach for health extension workers, especially at community level, and support from various budgets, um, like supervisors at different levels. Barriers to improve, uh, to implement the quality improvement models include weak leadership and lack of accountability. Only few nutrition service quality indicators are aligned with existing quality improvement initiative and program. Limited ownership of quality improvement process and sometimes focus on reportable output indicators. As extension workers workload, also one of the challenges. His staff, the high staff turnover, limited capacity of his extension workers to apply model for improvement, particularly in understanding the variation, shortage of supplies, closure of exports due to various reasons, inadequate support from Warada Health Office or District, and contextual factors affecting service delivery process. Next slide, please. Finally, some of the recommendations are attention from higher level for application of quality improvement models at PHQ level with particular focus for preventive nutrition services is still needed. Quality improvement approach and assessment tools should be integrated into basic nutrition related trainings. Integrate more nutrition quality, quality of care indicators in existing maternal, newborn child and adolescent health quality of care initiative and programs need to be more simplified quality improvement approach for community-based implementation, need-based training and intensive coaching or mentoring at all levels and need to have a, a pool of coach at all levels. Joint planning and monitoring of quality focused intervention by quality experts at different levels, regularly application of external quality audit in all PHCUs to monitor and support quality related activities. Finally, the last but not least, emphasis should be given on engaging community and clients. Thank you so much. Now uh, over to Jadis. Uh, Thank you. Thank you, Zanabu, and, and thank you to, to all of our speakers for these wonderful and insightful presentations. Um, we are coming close to the end of our time together today. Um, but one question for maybe all of the speakers and, and building on a point that was just in, in Zanabu's presentation on the way forward, as we're building up uh, quality improvement and quality of care for nutrition services in health facilities, what are some recommendations and ways that this process and initiative can be actually extended to the community and caregivers um, and clients of, of those facilities? So um, I don't know if, if someone wants to come on to their video, if they have an idea, or if maybe Zinabu, if there has been any progress in this line of work um, with growth through nutrition and reaching community and caregivers. Or Dr. Desalyn, if there's been any conversations about this within the national quality strategy in Ethiopia? 
Is there any thoughts you can share on how to reach the community and caregivers? Sita, I'm, I'm very sorry. Can you, can you say it again? That's a question. One of the ways forward recommended and a question we received from a participant today is wondering how these quality improvement processes are really reaching the communities and the caregivers of children um, who are clients of the health facilities. Uh, yes, the, so the national approach that we are going to uh, use in we have also used previously that uh, we have uh, a platform for engagement of the uh, caregivers and patients, uh, those concerned, including the community. So in the community, we have uh, an arrangement called Health uh, Development Army. And so they, they evaluate the care delivery to the health system that includes additional services, and we, we receive the feedback and the, the respective parties work together to be uh, care And similarly, the caregivers are encouraged to participate in the improvement discussion. And we will have uh, the catchment meeting facilities, and their voice is heard, and uh, their ideas are taken to uh, uh, initiatives. It is the general approach that we are Thank you, Dr. Kazun. Senevu, do you have anything yeah. to add? Yeah, just to add, um, as I already uh, explained that uh, the health center, under health center, there are at least minimum, there is uh, there are five health sources that, at community level. So the health center oversee all uh, health spots and in each health spot there needs to be community quality team. Uh, in our learning site there is a community quality improvement team uh, which involves members are the health extension uh, the health extension program supervisor uh, health extension uh, support from health center uh, the health okay. development the health development armies from the community. Uh, even some Kabbalists, you can see Kabbalists, Kabbali man management, um, family health team focal at community level. Even sometimes we can see community representative in that community um, team, the quality team. And they used to align with uh, already uh, the existing structure at community level, that's community scorecard. So they also align that as to identify some of the, to answer or to respond some of the CRC or the plant's voice, like a community voice. So they use that uh, as an uh, improving uh, platform. So I think uh, they need to be uh, as a sub team, like for the quality overseen by health uh, center. So there is a sub team, like the health center is considering that one of the health centers, like uh, one of the unit, like NT or uh, under five units. So they have a sub quality team at community, each uh, health post, community level. So it needs to be strengthened that uh, quality uh, team at community level. Uh, so I think that would be uh, working and still we are, uh, seen that there are a lot of improvements, especially uh, involving the health development armies uh, community. They work as to synthesize uh, communities, especially in screening, they mobilize uh, awareness creation. They did a lot of things. So I think it's good to involve them in the equality committee at community level. Thank you, Jenny. Wonderful. Thank you so much for those additional insights. And thank you to everyone. We received many wonderful questions that we will be compiling and responses to following the webinar today since we don't have time to get to all of them. 
Um, but big thank you again to all of our speakers today. And we really look forward to collectively learning with everyone who, who was on the webinar today on how we can continue to improve the quality of nutrition services within maternal newborn and child health services. So thank you and um, have a wonderful day. <laughs>